Hello, on this video we're going to look at distinguishing Boolean linear functions from Boolean nonlinear functions. Let me explain by example. So here we have, also this is like, I'm not going to talk about this, but this is like the algebraic representation. I will talk about that briefly. Uh, but anyway, down here we have n equals 2. And you know, so, so like a Boolean function is like if you label the vertices, and then a linear function is if you can like draw a line that separates the uh, in, uh, the positive outputs from the negative outputs, and this line is um, I'm just gonna take it as given is you know like represented by the weights and the biases here, and so we want to know like given a labeling of the inputs. Um, is the function linear or nonlinear? And we're going to we're going to continue with n equals two because it uh, there's a property that we feel that is certainly associated with nonlinear or distinguishing linearity and nonlinearity, and we want to describe that property. So it turns out for n equals two, there's like a single function up to a negation that is nonlinear. And this function, uh, I, I guess is like, you could describe it as parity because, yeah, you could describe it as parity, meaning like the parity of the number of ones in the input. You could, you could also describe it as, as exclusive or, and uh, probably some other stuff. Anyway, so like, but this function is nonlinear and um, we don't, we're, uh, we're not gonna, I guess like give a strong proof for that, but it can kind of intuit that like if you try to, you know, any, any line that puts these two points on one side has to like separate these two points. And so we're, we're kind of going to like generalize that idea. So like specifically what we're going to say is that uh, like the, these two points are opposing corners. Sorry, these two points are negation pairs. And these two points are negation pairs because each element is like a negation of the other element. And so the whole proposition that we're looking at is that if you have a function and it separates two, any two negation pairs, then the function is not linear. And we're going to give an argument that that generalizes to arbitrary n. Uh, so to be clear, uh, yeah, that's clear. All right, so let me like show that this applies to general n. And so to do that, we're going to look at this printout for n equals four. And we're just going to claim that this applies to all n. Um, I guess like without proof or like maybe it is with proof, I don't even know. Um, so anyway, what we've done here is we've selected an arbitrary weight array and an arbitrary bias. And then we've sorted the 16 vertices of the n equals 4 hypercube by the dot product of the point x with the weight array w. And, and yeah, we've sorted all the rows. And then the key observation is we're like, uh, because we're we're concerning we're concerning ourselves with points and their negations like negation pairs, so like what what is happening to the negation pairs, and uh, like you can observe like these two points. I didn't draw that square very well, but those two points are negations. These two, and then like this one, and this one is a negation, and like that like continues. Uh, and all this is saying is that if you have a dot product with a point and then you negate the point, that's equivalent to multiplying the dot product by, I mean, it's like the linear, linearity or whatever, like if you have x, w, and then you do, uh, and then you multiply x by negative, then that equals like negative x, w. And so what that corresponds to is reflection over like the zero marker or like the zero point. And 
So because of this, because of this observation, when we bring in our bias, which represents the decision boundary, right, and that's true for any bias, like any bias is just going to separate some uh, top rows from the bottom rows. And so you're always going to have this reflection property. And so, uh, like, visually, we can see that uh, all of the negation pairs that occur on the same side of the hyperplane all occur on the same side of the hyperplane. So in particular, like, you don't have, you can't have, like, a negation pair here where you would have, like, this pair is up here, this pair is down here. And, and you can't have that because of, like, the reflection property. Right? That's, like, a good argument. So we feel that that has shown uh, this proposition, f as a linear function implies there are no negation pairs on opposite sides of the hyperplane. And I think like the contrapositive of that is uh, if f separates any two negation pairs, f is nonlinear. And but what we what we really want is if f is nonlinear, then f separates at least one pair of negation pairs. Because if this third statement is true, then you can kind of use that as a, uh, you know, distinguish, you can use it to distinguish linear from nonlinear functions. Because given a function, you just go through all the subcubes and you look for any two negation pairs that are separated by the function. And if you have found one, then you know the function is nonlinear. And, um, yeah, I mean, that, that's like highly computationally inefficient or whatever, um, but that's fine because it, it gives like a geometric kind of like reason for the nonlinearity of a function, I feel. Uh, but, but how to like modify all of these considerations to prove, to like argue for this, um, I shall leave as an open question. Thanks.